and welcome to the MBS Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I came, I saw, I ate popcorn. Yay. And also joining us today is Tara. Quick, what year is this? I think I traveled back in time. Uh, minus five, and two, uh, 2019. Oh, okay, then I'm good. Alright, okay, okay. <laughs> I love the way you say that. It's like, oh, good. That's, that's, that's the boring year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 2018 was the boring me. That didn't get a lot of reviews out. So I'm hoping 2019 I could finally do that. That's what I like. Okay. The the killer bee invasion won't be until 2021. Oh, wow. Okay. That's going to be safe. Not so, the bees! <laughs> Not the bees! Oh, my God. Nicolas Cage has a lot of play last year. Oh, my goodness. But anywho, talking about Nick Cage, um, in today's endeavor we are going to talk about the movies of 2018 that quote unquote we watch what do you mean, quote unquote we watched i i'm not pretending i watched these in the theaters like, on, yes on, yeah. I, I should have yes so i totally them. saw those i totally saw those oscar worthy movies <laughs> i was very scintillated wait some oh, of yeah. these movies were oscar worthy i don't know <laughs> But anyway, yeah, um, so today we're going to talk about the movies that we watch of 2018 slash 19 because some things here on the list do not make sense. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to talk about a movie and if Tara or Silver here watch the movie too, they're going to jump in and we'll do a short discussion saying what we like, what we don't like, what we how we feel and stuff. So, yeah, basically what we did of last year. So, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. A lot of movies came out and we were entertained. Yeah. Are you not entertained? I'm not sure. Some of them are. You know what? I'm double checking of a movie as I watch. None of them are boring. They're all good. Yay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I'm going to start first then. I'm going to start first then. So, the first movie that I watched of 2018 was Black Panther. Oh, yes. I saw that. Oh, yes. I saw bits of it because there were times where I was getting kind of bored of it and I kind of fell asleep at some parts. Really? Wait, wait. Uh, Tara, did you watch it in theaters or home? Home. Ah, all right. I was about to say, I have a friend who she did fall asleep during Van Helsing years ago <laughs> in the theater, which uh, is probably the most damning criticism you can make of the movie, so... If you fell asleep in the theater, I wouldn't blame you as long as you didn't snore. Oh. I mean, I wouldn't fall asleep at a movie theater. If I'm paying to watch a movie, of course I'll stay up and watch it. But that's the thing why I kind of wait until a movie is released on DVD or I guess if some people use Chrome boxes or Android boxes, I think that's what it's called. But the thing is, though, with those, you got like the shaky cam. But besides that, I don't really go to the movie theaters because it's like, say, I pay to watch a movie and then all of a sudden it's not really a good movie. Mm, true, 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 true. But for me, I do this because it's fun. And even if I do watch a bad movie, uh, the audience at home who are listening to this now are going to be entertained. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but anyway, yes, Black Panther, Black Panther. So Black Panther, for me, was one of those movies that, that I first thought that I wouldn't like or I wasn't going to like. Because, come on, if you've seen the Black Panther in the Marvel cartoons or whatever it is, he's kind of boring like there's nothing much they could do with him oh boy golly was i wrong and this movie was a lot of fun and how do i put this the actors that they picked were really awesome the costume designs were on point the how do i put this like it's a lot of fun like it is so good silver what do you think well i, I thoroughly enjoyed it i love the the conflict between them I liked this this world that is a blending of tradition and advanced technology. I mean, it's it's incredibly unique. I'm a big fan of archetypes. And so you see a king who fosters growth, who is genuinely looking out for his people, wants their future. Another king who basically views the, views the, the outside as the enemy. Anything new or out beyond his control is something that has to be put down right away. And so it's a, it's a great character study there. And of course, there's the great humor. I mean, you have the the violent gorilla tribe uh, in the mountains, and they say, "If you say another word, I'll eat you." <laughs> and then they just then they just start burst out giggling. I'm kidding. We're vegetarians. 
<laughs> you guys are the most hardcore vegetarians I've ever seen. Fun fact about the gorilla leader guy. Uh, in the comics slash uh, cartoon, he is a bad guy. Like He is one of the um, rivals or one of the antagonists for the Black Panther. So here's another thing about the Marvel movies that I think a lot of people dislike is the handling of certain characters in the movie. Well, honestly, I kind of like him the way he was in this. Yeah, true. But sometimes if you're a hardcore fan, you'll feel, I won't say insulted by you, but you'll be bothered by it. And also, uh, who now? Uh, Michael B. Jordan here. I, I think he was awesome in this. Forgive my ignorance, but that's Michael Jordan's son? I don't know. Let, let me double check. Uh, I'm going to say no, unless stated otherwise. No, no, no. I mean, be, no. Okay, so it's just... I guess it, he includes the beat so he doesn't confuse people. Yeah. Michael, Michael Jordan was in this movie? When did he get into acting? Oh, he must have had work done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, he plays Killmonger. And he's part of that trend of suddenly Marvel understanding how to make sympathetic villains, or villains you actually root for. True, 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 true. And at the same time, too, he is a anime guy. The costume he wore in the sh movie, uh, if you really look closely at it, uh, it resembles Vegeta's outfit, and he personally asked for it. Well, of course, everyone wants to be like Vegeta. I mean, I'm the prince of all Saiyans. I'm just saying. <laughs> Excuse me, King Vegeta? I never knew how badly I wanted something until I got it. <laughs> Yeah, but still, um, this movie was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed watching it. But one problem that I noticed and a lot of people talk about is the handling of villains. Like, there's no villains in Marvel movies. Or lasting villains. What? Like that. Oh, lasting villains. I was like, there's plenty of villains. Oh, They're yeah. just not always well written. Or dare. <laughs> well, I mean, compare Ant-Man's villain to Killmonger here. Leagues of difference. Oh, true, true. Um, yeah, big difference. But, uh, but it's one of those scenarios where, okay, um, Ant-Man's villain, uh, Ghost or something like that, she's... All right. Yeah, you know I what? I mean, the first Ant-Man. Oh, the first one, uh, Wasp. No, um, Yellow Jacket. Yeah, Cookie Cutter, Cookie Cutter. But yeah, with uh, who now? I'm trying to look for the guy who played... Um, the villain here with the arm. What was his name? The guy with the arm? Oh, oh yes. A uh, fellow lost an arm to Ultron. Yeah. And then he... Re hey, wait, Norman, there you go. There's your recurring villain. Oh, he's dead. It's just he didn't recur... He didn't recur that long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, um, uh, let's, let's wrap it up because we all enjoyed this movie. It was really entertaining. But no, uh, Tara, why, why, did, why, why would you quote-unquote bored well, it wasn't that I was bored. I guess it just took a while to get to the good action. I mean, I, I did enjoy it because I, I saw it at the beginning and then I guess I kind of missed the middle part and then I saw the ending and I, I enjoyed it. But all that talk about the tribes and how, you know, king this and you have to take your place or something like that, I, I believe that's how it goes. Like I said, I don't I, I fell asleep halfway through it, but I did enjoy it, though. Like, I don't really remember much of it, though. Ah, all right, all right. Still, yeah, it, uh, I just remember something. The guy who played um, the guy with the arm, his character's name is Ulysses Claus, and he's played by Andy Serkis. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this movie was not bad. I, I enjoyed it. Like, I was surprised that I was entertained by it. Like, it kind of snuck up on me, like how Doctor Strange was. Hmm. Very strange. I know. So, yeah, um, we all three watched this. So let's move on to the next person. Silver, what movie did you watch? Well, uh, I'm not going to say these in any particular order, but I saw First Man. First Man? Oh, okay. What's that all about? It is the story of uh, Neil Armstrong and his path to becoming the first man on the moon. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Tara, have you watched it? I've heard about it, but I never watched it. Okay, so Silver, do you enlighten us? Well, it's from early on in his career, right up until landing and returning from the moon. But it is 
it, it starts off very heartbreaking as with the death of his daughter due to cancer. And they do a lot to drive home the cost of, of this program. All the lives lost in accidents, in, in test flights. There's this very chilling scene where three men are in a test seal. They're, they're going, they're not launching the ship, but they're sealing it up and making sure everything's connected right. But a fire breaks out and they're in a room filled with oxygen pumped in. Oh, no. So you, you cut to the outside of the ship and there's just this boom. And it, the, the door doesn't open, but you see smoke seeping out. And you're like, oh my God. And you're like, okay. And so it really drove home the cost and the fear. Every time Neil Armstrong is in one of these ships, they're the most advanced vehicles on the planet, and they're shaking like, uh, I don't know, a tin can in a storm. So you genuinely feel the terror of it all, and you just marvel at uh, how much of a risk they took going up there. It's very well done. I, I don't know how historically accurate it is to the people. Buzz Aldrin comes off as a real jerk in this. Mostly because he has a habit of just, there's no filter between brain and mouth. And despite what people may think, that's not a virtue or a strength. Is that um, true to the character in real life? I'm not sure. I've heard Buzz Aldrin was kind of an ass after he returned from the moon. I mean, he'd used that status to seduce women. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so not not a lot of positive things on his end. But you, you also see the toll this takes on his family including that before he's about to go into space, he has trouble even sitting down and talking with his two sons to describe what might happen. You know, you have to hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And it shows the fear and the the impact it has on the, especially the wives of these astronauts. They had to face the possibility that they uh, they might have to raise their children alone. You know, you feel for everybody. So it was a very well done movie. I don't know if it's it's not the greatest. I can tell you some others that drove me to tears, and we'll get to that. It sounds like a fun movie. It sounds like a fun movie. And did you watch it normal or three D? Oh, I, I don't go for three D. Ah, all right then. All right then. That's a stupid gimmick, and everyone knows it. No comment. Yeah. All right. That that sounds like a fun movie to kind of watch. Like I, I I'm guessing that those kind of movies for me are going to be those movies where I need to be in the mood to watch them. Yes. All right, then. And Tara, what about you? Well, th I know this ain't on the list because I'm pretty sure we all searched 2018 movies, but I did watch it in a select theater because this is also on Netflix. I watched Mowgli Legend of the Jungle. Oh, really now? Yes. I did not see that, so I'm superfluous here. It is in the 2018 movie list. It premiered in... November 29. So yeah, is there? Yes. It started off as, I, I believe, an actual movie trailer to appear in like all these theaters. But I guess the way the movie is, and maybe, I'm, I'm assuming it's dark tone. I mean, I don't see it as a dark tone, but I'm guessing, you know, with the Jungle Book, you know, Disney, everyone thinks it's all bright and colorful. I guess that's why it was also as a Netflix movie. But that's the problem with what the jungle, the quote unquote Jungle Book. Uh, everybody's thinking about the Disney version. While, if I'm not mistaken, there have been other versions of the Jungle Book. But anyway, I'm um, stealing your limelight. Your limelight. <laughs> so, um, I have not watched this, so uh, what do you think, man? Like, how was it? Well, this was directed by Andy Serkis, which, you know, he's a great actor. <laughs> I didn't even know he directed at first until I did some history. But they did the motion capture thing where, you know, they cut the people's faces and they put on the animals. Like, Andy Serkis is Baloo, Bagheera is played, uh, that's no, right. Yeah, Bagheera is played by Christian Bale. And I never read the book, but this is a darker tone of the movie and how, like, but instead of Baloo being all nice and friendly, I mean, he is nice and friendly still, but Baloo in this movie has his serious moments, and he's basically, like, trying to train Mowgli into joining the pack, but he's all serious. He'd be like, you gotta join, you gotta do this, or else you'll, you'll not make it into the pack, and you'll be an outcast. And this it's all, and even though, like, in the previous movies, they talk, or not, I wouldn't say previous movies, but other Jungle Book movies, they talk about how much Shere Khan is a threat, but they don't really show it. As much, mm -hmm. but in here, Shere Khan is a big threat, and he basically brings chaos to the jungle. And at this point, everyone's like, "We gotta get rid of the tiger," but they don't want to break the law of the jungle. So Mogi's like, "Screw the law! I'm gonna take him down myself." <laughs> oh, by the way, a uh, fun fact: uh, 
Shere Khan. He's been played by Doctor Strange. Yes, he has. He's been played by Benedict Cumberbatch. And that's the thing. They got a great cast, too. But as I did more research after the movie came out, a lot of parents were very, very upset because they think, you know, oh, it's Mowgli, the Jungle Book. My kids are going to love this movie. But then I guess one scene that I guess traumatized people because, uh, I mean, I don't really, it's not really spoilers if I say it, do I? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like, okay, uh, Silver, what's your stance? We've given them plenty of time. They should have seen it their own dang selves. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So in one part of the movie, I mean, I won't go into too much detail, but there's one part of the movie where a hunter is showing Mowgli his collection because Mowgli, because the pack pretty much kicks him out. So he goes to the man village and mm-hmm. the hunter shows Mowgli his collection. And in one part, they show uh, the head of a, another wolf. And then it's just all of a sudden it was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. And I'm pretty sure maybe that's why parents didn't really like it. And it was too dramatizing for the kids. But I always, I didn't mind. I mean, it was expe- it was unexpected, but... It gets more into Mowgli's life, and after Mowgli sees the head, he starts crying. He's like, I left the jungle, and now he's dead. Oh, wow. And I, I, I'm hey. guessing that it's something from the book, then. Yeah, like, I never read the book, but I it looks more darker. That, or perhaps they're just like, hey, how can we mess with some kids? <laughs> oh, here we go. Woo! Yeah, they, yeah. they bring back the watership down nightmare into the Mowgli. <laughs> oh god no uh boys oh boys and th- is that it is there any more to your thoughts on that yeah that's pretty much it i mean other than i enjoyed the movie and i i wouldn't say if there's gonna be a sequel or not the way they ended it i doubt it but it was a pretty good movie uh all righty then and well on to me again and as for me um my second movie of last year was pacific rim uprising yay Big giant robots fighting big giant kaijus. Yay! So, um, who else watched this? I saw clips on YouTube, but not Ooh, much you else. did not Same watch here. this silver? Whoa. Really now? I. One, I guess the timing didn't work out, but also part of me sensed like Pacific Rim was, was lightning in a bottle. It was just that right blend of cheese and caring about the characters just enough to actually like them without being like super de duper invested. There's plenty there's plenty you can say you can point out that is hammy. But this new one is like you're you're trying to reinvent it even though you pretty much killed the entire enemy last time. You nu- you nuke their entire place. Mm, yes, I see your point. So uh let's see. This movie was not as great as the previous one. Like I, I, I see what you mean, Silver, by saying that, um, like in a bottle, and then like they kind of had a conclusive ending, quote unquote. But um, for me, when I saw this, it felt like okay, they're trying to create a new universe, and not really the universe, but they're trying to create a really good story with this. But I didn't feel like this movie had that oomph. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't feel like that crazy moment or whatever it is. Like, it, it felt bland at points. And the way that the story is, is trying to tell um, the story of, uh, who this now? Um, John Boyega, one of the characters. Uh, he is the son to the previous, yeah, remember the black guy from the previous? Um, the, com- the commander. Yeah, the commander. This is his son. Which raises all kinds of questions about what was, how did he get along with Mako? Oh, uh, adopted. Well, yeah, but I mean, the last movie, he was talking, oh, Mako, I'll always be there for you. The son's off to the side. Hey, what about me? Where are you again? <laughs> yeah, but no, um, in this one, they, they try to try and start a clean slate. So basically, you have um, John Boyega's character here being that down in the dumps kind of guy who is down on his luck and suddenly gets a second chance to kind of get his get his life on the right track and then you have a, another character here oh wow um, the list of characters here are not all over this give it a um, wow I am clutching for straws here <laughs> but anywho uh, you got this one new female lead she's kind of a street rat street urchin 
she tried to build her own robot and well it's it's there like it's one of those things where oh um you're a street urchin and we're putting you in this program because you have a lot of potential but you are not well disciplined and stuff blah 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 you know this kind of stories it's it's kind of cliche to be honest yeah, but in some ways, I feel like you're describing the first movie. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, but it, except that, uh, you know what? I say that this movie is not bad, but it's a bit boring at points. or It kind of gets boring with the story. And there's no wah moments. I appreciate it. I always like a good. Ah, yeah, I mean, moments. like you know, when you get that yeah, 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 yeah moment, like yeah, stuff. Oh wait, wait Rick James is in this. <laughs> yeah, you wish. So Rick James. Yeah, you want to go fight that kaiju? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but no. Um. In all honesty, ah, uh, this is not as good as the previous one. Entertaining, but not as great as the previous one. In a sense of the word, yeah. It's been a while. Like, that movie came out in, what, February of last year? No, March. So, yeah, my, my memory is not that great. It's even a miracle if I remember any of it. Yeah, but fight scenes are awesome. So, if you like big giant robots fighting, it's there. It's there. So, anywho. Super fighting robots. <laughs> Let's see if <laughs> it's But, anyway, Silver, what about you? What movie did you watch? All right, let's, get, let's talk about something just crud. Oh. Yeah? Just... Off of the Predator. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, the Predator. This movie was so, awful. So before you before you start, Silver, um, Tara, have you watched this? No. <laughs> no. I personally have not, but I have heard people talk about it. So carry on, Silver. Man. <laughs> I'm not sure I want oh, Silver, to. Silver, I get it that you're half eagle, but don't be a predator on us, okay? <laughs> okay, so it, the movie starts off well enough with a cr- crashing ship and a team getting taken out by this thing. But then it goes into left field. I'm just, why are you doing this a predator movie? There's a kid. You put a kid in a predator movie, and he's like a very central character. And... The guy who survives the predator attack is locked up because, you know, they want to keep things secret. And I don't want to go into super detail on the plot because it takes very bold views with the predator, tries to take it in a different direction with a clash between the, the, in the predator culture. I mean, for the first, for the first time, we actually hear that maybe some of these creatures don't want to hunt or actually are behaving as allies to humans. Except that same ally kills several humans in a panic or just, hey, you strapped me to a table. I'm going to kill you, but I'm here to save you, but I'm going to kill you. Uh, by the way, what was what was the rating for this movie? I'm trying to look at it and I don't see it. PG-13 or R? Uh, um, probably R, but mostly for violence, not for language. Mm. Actually, when I say that, when I say that, I realize that usually it's actually, it's language that really drives something to rated R. Mm. Language says that for some reason violence is not so bad. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. PG PG yeah, thirteen. I mean, take a look. See at Mortal Kombat. Like, did you see Melina's costume? Oh, the horror! I mean, everything basically these days it's always PG thirteen. <laughs> Unless you're Deadpool, we'll talk about that later. Yes. But here's where I think the movie well and truly fails. And this is where it actually makes me angry. They're trying so hard to say, oh, look at how we respect autistic people. Look at how we're saying they're the next stage of human evolution. Uh, look Look at how, well, PC we're being. But then the team of soldiers involved in this are suffering PTSD, uh, uh, Tourette's, stutters they are very hurt and the movie plays it off for laughs you're trying to have it both ways movie and you're failing at both in my eyes yeah i can see what you mean and they're not really trying to well how i put this there is is heavy-handed like 
they want to say that oh look at us we're pc and stuff with this uh people with people who have autism but the rest you can go burn in a trash fire you know it's funny i i after the movie i did go look up some people do make the argument that autism is then is really the next stage of human evolution i don't really follow the entire argument but i found it a little suspect when the when the predator threw a translator so there goes any sense of foreign or impossible communication Mm. he says through a translator i am seeking one who is a true warrior amongst you and it's the young autistic boy who has to curl into a ball during a fire alarm because the noise is so terrible yeah it's like oh wow I, I don't I don't think you're you're conveying the right message yeah, here. And that's not great. Uh, you know what? <sighs> From what I understand, this movie was not awesome because Olivia Munn's character, the professor scientist woman, like she's not great. <laughs> oh yeah, so she's barely involved and then all of a sudden she's super scientist who's deducing everything from a vial. She just knows what the predators are doing through the bare minimum of research. Yeah. Let's just say that this movie was not fun, not great. No, I, I think it was a wasted opportunity. Yeah. Like, the whole Predator universe with the aliens, like, you could have done so much with them, but no. Like, it feels like they're trying to find that footing. You know what I mean? Like, they're trying to find their groove of okay, how do we do this? Because the Predator is kind of in our century or our timeline while the aliens are way in the future. So how do we get them together? Something I don't like about time travel or... like I don't, I don't mind time traveling or like trying to make things come together, but at least make it work because sometimes it doesn't really work out the well that some people think it will. Yeah, and it feels like the Predator here is like more set up for the future because of the Weyland Yutani thing. In the end, they're spoilers. I don't care. <laughs> well, the truth is, they had their groove for a little bit. Uh, just when they, well, with the first Predator, oh. you're being hunted in a jungle oh, yeah. by something more than human. That's perfect. Oh, fun fact: Did you know the guy who put on the costume for the Predator was John Claude Van Damme? At first, let me guess. He quit when when Schwarzenegger called him an ugly mother. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> I wow. was going to have fun with that one, but nah, because he got annoyed with the heat and whatnot and canceled. And like, you know what? I, I'm going to point people at this one YouTube um, video that I watched to kind of know a bit about what's going on with the Predator, and that's at Matt McMuscles, and he did a video talking about the Predator series with. Uh, another YouTube guy and it's worth a watch if you do not want to watch the whole series but want to well catch up fast so yeah oh so hold on wait you said that Jean-Claude or didn't like the Predator playing as a Predator because it was too hot in there right yeah because they were playing in the Mexican jungle I forgot or some place it was really hot well, he should take notes from the original Godzilla movies <laughs> I'm just saying, in the original Godzilla movies, the actor was sweating so much in there that there was actually one moment where he passed out, but he still kept going. He never quit. Meanwhile, John claude whatever, just quits after being too hot. <laughs> from what I heard, from what I heard. But anywho, um, so is that it? Yeah, I think that's a good place to call it. This was not a good movie. Ah, all right, then. All right, then. And Tara, what about you? What's your movie? I want- I'm going to mention a movie that we've all probably seen, uh, mm-hmm. Avengers Infinity War. Oh, yes, ah, yes, 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 yes. So you have the floor first, my friend. Talk about it. Well, uh, since we're heading to spoiler territory, at the end, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, it's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I do love crossovers. I'm a sucker for crossovers. I mean, if you get all these different movies or all these different characters come together in one movie or even an episode if it's a TV crossover, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. But uh, I'm one thing I was kind of disappointed was with the Hulk. I mean, I get it. You know, Thanos beats you up, but then throughout the whole movie, he doesn't even make an appearance except when he's just being a cryberry. Cryberry. <laughs> 
when he's being a crybaby and Banner's like, come on, Hulk, help me out here. And Hulk's like, no. He's like, oh, screw you then. Like, okay, just hop into that Hulk buster then. The Hulk is scared. Like, this is the first time that he got his butt whooped. And like Hulk always said, Hulk is the strongest one there is until proven wrong. And this is the time where he's proven wrong and he's scared. You're strong, but somebody else is stronger than you. For the first time in your life, you're getting your ass kicked. So, mm. True. Well, uh, that just makes me look forward to this year and Endgame. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Yes, Endgame. Woo. And then the twist. Only Spider-Man is resurrected so he can star in Far From Home. Oh, no. Everyone else stays dead. Hey, hey, silver, oh, silver, no. silver. You, you want to know the secret? Everybody's dead. Like, uh, Far From Home is all happening in uh, Purgatory. Purgatory is a, is a school field trip? <laughs> I can totally buy, buy into that. No, um, but still, um, Silver, what, what do you think of this movie? <laughs> Oh, I loved it. I love uh, continuing the trend of we actually think highly of the villains. Mm. Thanos. Thanos ruled this movie. Yeah. It was his and his alone. Yeah. And uh, oh, great battles, great scenes. And I did feel for, you know, I don't want to go. <laughs> oh, here come the waterworks. Oh, it's, it's, it's David Ted. It's all over again. And here's the thing with um, Spider-Man. Um... You notice how Tom Holland is like squirming around like in pain while the rest of the other quote unquote heroes or people that's being turned into dust doesn't feel anything? Well he he has spider sense. He may sense it coming. No, it's okay, that that is true, but the spider sense is telling him that something's wrong, you're in danger, you're in danger, you're in danger. That is what is causing him pain. So, fun fact. Yay. Well, I mean, in all fairness, he wouldn't have been having that pain if Star-Lord or Quill <laughs> wouldn't be all angry just because Gamora has passed away. I mean, they were so close to getting the gauntlet off his hands, but then a few whacks on the head and he snaps out of it. He's like, come on, you messed everything up for the world. No, but here's the thing. Like, it is all planned. Remember how Doctor Strange mentions that he will not give up the um, time stone like, he will protect the time stone with his life. Suddenly, nope, I'll just give you my time stone. The hell? Actually, yeah. That's another thing I want to point out, too. Because um, at the end of the... F- uh, one time I was at a get-together with my cousins. And my cousins were talking about, like, oh, you know, the, you know, why they do that, this and that, blah, blah. I'm like, well, if you listen carefully, Doctor Strange points out, Tony, it was the only way. Meaning because uh-huh. Doctor Strange said there was a million ways that this could happen. And there's only one way they can come out on top. And that must be the only way, which he had to give up the stone and everyone has to die in order to win against Thanos. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Got spoilers. I mean, it's not really a spoiler because Doctor Strange I'm did ki- mention that. I'm kidding. Plus, we've already talked about a lot of movies with spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I get to bust your chops about it for no reason. <laughs> Go bust B- Bliss's chops. <laughs> So, anyhow, um, the comedy for this movie is not bad. Like, I do like the interaction, especially when you have a big cast and crew. Okay, here's the thing. When you have an ensemble of heroes or characters, some of them are going to get their toes stepped on. But in this one, I don't feel that. Like, I feel like everybody's having an equal share. I like the interaction with Thor and Rocket. I like the interaction with Cap and Thor. And I, I just like the interaction with everybody here. Like, it is just so much fun to have to see this movie. So, yeah, it, it's and you feel like it's earned. They built it up over all these movies. And I mean all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, man, Sp- Spider-Man is one of those heroes where, how do I put this? Um, you have Superman, Batman. Those are iconic heroes. Like, when you say who's the... Um, poster child for DC, you'll say Batman and Superman. When you have Marvel here, who's the poster child? It's gotta be Spider-Man, without a doubt. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah, and now makes me curious. Does Safi know about Spider-Man? Oh, if she, she doesn't know about Spider-Man. Oh no, she does. She does. Remember when uh she saw uh, what you call this Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? 
Oh, but does, oh, she, yeah. know about, does she know about the 90s cartoon Spider-Man? I yeah, exactly. Know. But anyway, um, let's get back on track with this one and try to you know, um, finish our thoughts on this. I, I like this movie. I say go watch it before Endgame so you get a general idea. And technically, um, Endgame is going to be the last of the uh, quote-unquote Marvel s- series with the whole phases. Like, it's been, what, 10 years of content that they had? I think so. So, that is just something amazing. Like, wows. Actually, speaking of Endgame, because, you know, we talk about Endgame, and at the end of the movie of mm-hmm. Infinity War, we get that little uh, end credits of Captain Marvel. But then after all of a sudden, we see Samuel L. Jackson play as another character in Captain Marvel. It's like, okay, that's kind of... I mean, I get you need another actor, but I mean, it just kind of gets confusing unless that character that Samuel L. Jackson is playing as in Captain Marvel is all of a sudden Nick Fury, but he somehow managed to survive. I don't know. No, the no, movie's no. not out here's, yet. Here's the thing. Um, with Captain Marvel, that's a flashback. Oh, okay then. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's young Nick Fury. Yeah, before ah, he okay. was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, he was an FBI guy. And he seems a much more innocent, but that's for the future. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, um, back to me then. So, yeah, on to me. Uh, the movie that I watched was Ready Player One. Ah, oh, man, this movie was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed this. Like, before the movie came out, I read the book. And, oh my god, the book was so much fun. It was so exciting. The ways that it presented itself was just awesome. And the movie was okay. I understand why they changed what they did. And, you know what? Yeah, it, it was fun. It was fun. I won't say cameos. The um, Easter eggs, the things that they had lying around. It was a lot of fun. This movie was fun. And before I carry on, Silver, did you watch this movie? No, I read the book and saw a few clips, but I was like, nothing's really going to top the book. All right. And Tara, did you watch this movie? I was planning on seeing it, but I I think at the time I was starting my new job, so I was too busy being on top of that. I mean, I've seen the trailer, and I have saw the little cameo appearances in the background, but I didn't fully get to see the movie. All right, yeah. So anyway, um, this movie was not bad. It tells the story of a guy named Wade Waltz, who is a gunter. Uh, a gunter is a person who goes around looking for keys in the oasis, and you know what? It's I'm, I'm spouting things that are not relevant for people who not who have not watched this movie but what, what i'm saying here is go watch the movie and enjoy it for what it is with even with all of the what you would call this um cameos like the rx78 or trace of overwatch and so on and a lot of things like it is a fun movie highly entertaining i would recommend it but what I highly recommend is go reading the book slash listening to the audio book because the audio book is read by Huil Huyten. And he does a fantastic job. If you, oh, you, re- you you heard that too? Yes, I I like audio books. I can work on projects while I listen. Yeah. So Huil Huyten did a good job on that. Like He really, I don't know, listening to him read the book was fun. Was fun, but um, Silver, what what are your thoughts on it? Like, what do you like about the book? So people, when they quote unquote watch the movie and listen to what we have to say about the book, what do you feel? Well, I I, I do like a lot of the eighties references. I I see. I think a lot of it stands on that appeal. It, it speaks to a very specific culture, with some very obscure facts, like the Leo Marveler robot. If you oh, yeah. know the, if you know the history about the Japanese Spider Man, ah, it all comes back to Spider Man. We're playing Five Degrees of Spider Man. Yeah, and the difference between the book and the TVs are licensing, because um, they wanted to get Ultraman. Uh, Ultraman was mentioned in the books, but not, uh, but he did not appear in the movie because they couldn't get the rights to put him in. There's a lot of differences between the books and the movies. 
personally for me, I find the movie highly entertaining. Go watch it. But I love the books even more. Yes. Yeah. I would I would definitely favor the books. Mm-hmm. Books are for eggheads. Not audio books. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Silver, what's your, what's next on your list? All right. Well, we're, we're being we're talking about good or mostly good. Let's talk about something so bad it's good. Oh, okay. the Meg. The what now? The Meg. The Meg. The Meg. Oh, the Meg. Oh, the Meg. Oh, 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 oh Meg. All right. <laughs> if, oh, I got a bit confused. Like Me- the Meg. Who's the Meg? I don't know. Are, Meg. Are you talking about Meg Griffin? Why? <laughs> Uh, shut up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I figure if we keep saying the title enough, people will catch on. Oh, the Meg, you ask for one thing, and that's a giant shark killing people. Mm-hmm. Now, they try and load in a lot of backstory for the what is kind of a cliche, a retired guy. He's haunted by a past and how things went wrong, but he's brought in and he... Uh, and he has to combat this giant shark from the prehistory. One, I, I do love when the Meg is finally attacking big shores. It's sort of the Chinese jaws. And there are a lot of characters, but not a lot of them uh, you really need to remember. Although they killed Hero from Heroes. Oh, no. I'm sad. So it's basically Jaws, but with a prehistoric shark. Yep, it's Jaws. It even makes some homages to Jaws. <laughs> Jaws. Jarge. Homage Jar Jar to Jaws. Man, homage to Jaws. Homage to Jaws. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you go in with no uh, expectations and just accept you're here for the cheese, you can actually have a lot of fun with it. And there's this great scene where the, the lead hero is in the water. And you're looking around and you see him, you see things from his first person perspective, looking above and below the waterline, trying to spot this giant shark. And you feel that vulnerability. You're like, Oh God, I don't want to be here. Get me to the mountains right now. I had a lot of fun with it. Well, why do I have this feeling where this kind of movie is made for the 4D, 3D kind of thing where it's banking on that experience where you put on your 3D glasses, your chair shakes and whatnot. Like, wow, wow. I'm feeling that these kind of movies are banking on that. Well, I've never been to a 4D showing. Hmm. So I, I can't tell you. I It did just fine in 2D for me. So w- would you recommend this movie, Silver? Like, personally, by hearing about it, it's not that great, but it's a lot of fun. So would you recommend? I I would recommend it if you get a bunch of friends together and are perfectly willing to riff on it. <laughs> all right. All right. So, Tara, what, what did you watch? All right. Well, a movie I saw last night, I saw Bumblebee. Oh, oh, God. I wanted to watch that one, but I couldn't and I didn't have time. Oh, wow. Okay. How was it? It was, well, uh, well before I watched it, I was a bit kind of, you know, eh about it because I'm thinking, okay, well, in the previous Transformers movies, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, you got the one guy and you got the Autobots and Decepticons mostly focused on the humans stuff and that with Michael Bay's fetish of explosions. <laughs> so before I went to go watch Bumblebee, I looked up saying, okay, who is, is Michael Bay the director for this one? I looked. He didn't direct it. I mean, he produced it, but it was directed by Travis Knight. Oh. Who also did Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh. So I was like, okay, this should be interesting. And I went I went into it, and it starts off with, actually, for once, in Cybertron. It starts off in Cybertron. You get to see Cybertron with all the trans- Autobots and Decepticons. Like, wow, Michael Bay didn't do anything like this. <laughs> and then you like got all these classic Autobots and Decepticons. You got Shockwave. You got Soundwave. You got Cliffjumper. It's like, oh, the memories. And then... Like, the the animation, I mean, like, not animation, but on Bumblebee in general, because what the the Bay movies, you sure you got a bit of emotion on Optimus and Bumblebee and all the other Autobots and Decepticons, but in Bumblebee, he, in the beginning, he loses his voice, and he doesn't really use the radio to talk until near the end of the movie, so his face expressions 
are so well detailed. You can really tell how he's feeling while he doesn't have his voice. You can see the fear in his eyes. You can see how curious he is. You can see how happy he is and how much fun he's having. He's basically like a, a young kid, but as an Autobot. You mentioned that Bumblebee here is kind of like a young kid and whatnot, because if this is canon to the previous movies, we remember that he was part in the Blitzkrieg, or he he was involved with somehow dispatching with the Nazis in World War Two. That's the thing. I don't know if this is exactly a prequel or if this is. I think. See, the thing is, I'm even more curious because at the, the the end of the movie, Bumblebee, instead of being like the love bug, he transforms into, into the Camaro, which you see in the first Transformers movie. Mm-hmm. But then at the end credits, you see the big the op- Optimus in his retro truck, like I guess the I, the G1 truck generation, mm-hmm. I don't know. But anyways, the end credits with him and Bumblebee on planet Earth, Optimus is talking, and you see a bunch of meteors coming down, which is probably the rest of the Autobots. But here I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. In the Michael Bay movies, Optimus was also crashing down on the Earth. But in here, he's already on Earth with Bumblebee. So is this like a prequel? Is this a new generation of Transformers? Like, If they're smart, they'll make it a soft reboot. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I hope they do make a, it's a reboot because I actually enjoyed Bumblebee rather than the Bay movies. <laughs> From what I understand about um, this movie specifically... In terms of all of the Transformers movie that exists by Michael Bay and whatnot, um, this is ranked number three from what people told me. So this movie was not bad. So, hmm. so wait, they. I'm assuming the first Transformers is number one. What's number two? Probably. Yeah, what's number two? I I don't know. Like, this is what from my friends told me. Personally, for me, I number one was okay. Number two was. Okay, you know what? I I don't remember. I I don't remember the Transformers movie. This is from secondhand knowledge from what my friend told me about the listing of all of the Transformers movie from good to bad. I I don't remember. They they aren't good to bad though. They're bad to insulting. <laughs> uh, but to me, the first Transformers movie from Michael Bay, it was all right. I mean, you you finally get to see the Transformers in live action. But then later on, I mean, there's like. Five Transformers movies, I believe, just always stays there. Welcome. Yeah, true, true. true and it's basically true. the same thing in general. You got the guy that's left out, and he lo- they lost a certain family member, and now they gotta keep this a secret. It's like repetitive. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. Yeah, and yeah, it, it kind of get boring. But so, um, by the sound of it, you really enjoyed this movie. I did actually. Uh, I mean, at the beginning, I was kind of iffy. Like, when I said at the beginning, it starts off as Cybertron. But then after they show the human... Uh, is it protagonist? Protagonist? Or the, the main character? Okay, protagonist, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes, the, the human protagonist, which is the girl. And it starts off with her, you know... I th- Like, look, if you swapped in on Bumblebee and you came into the scene where this girl is looking at all these other kids and she's looking at this one guy she wants to fall in love with, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that it was Bumblebee and you probably thought it was another chick flick. <laughs> Or you could say we're watching um, the love bug or Herbie. Oh, you wait. <laughs> but I thought that it was going to take a while for Bumblebee to make his appearance, kind of like what they do in the Bay Transformers mm-hmm. movie, how they focus so much on humans. But no, it's all of a sudden quickly, oh, she found Bumblebee. She fixed him. Like, oh, okay, good. We don't have to wait for like a half hour until they finally appear. <laughs> Huzzah. So, um, Tara... You sound hype about this, so would you recommend watching this? I would. Alrighty then, alrighty then. And Silver, w- did you have any interest in watching this one before? I am interested. It's still in some theaters, so I may get to see it. But it's all sort of a question of time and what else uh, is out. True that, true that. Oh, I have one important question for you, Tara. Yes? Did you see John Cena? Yes, I mean, who doesn't see John Cena? I mean, he's everywhere, and even in memes where he goes, and his name is John Cena. <laughs> but no, um, how, how was he in this one? Like, how was his acting? He he was actually pretty good. I mean, I can't really, I can't really say much because when I first saw him acting, you're like, okay. I mean, I wasn't expecting him, but he was all right. Mm, because one of the few reasons I wanted to watch Bumblebee was John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I'm a fan, but because I want to see how his acting goes. Because when you had The Rock, The Rock's acting was okay. He started in The Scorpion King and so on. Then now he's awesome. 
So I wanted to see how John Cena is and so on. But anyway, um, yeah, he's not that bad. All right, all right, all right. So next up is me and talking about The Rock. Haha, <laughs> I went to see Rampage. I'm sorry. I went to see Rampage. <laughs> Norman, why would you go on a Rampage? <laughs> so anywho, um, this movie is based on a video game, believe it or not. So I can't, I can't believe it because I played the video game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how do I put this? Like, they say that video game movies suck. And honestly, for this one, not really. It was enjoyable. It was really enjoyable. Um, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson's acting skill in this one has... You know what? It's insulting for me to call him The Rock because that is his um, wrestling name, moniker. And now he's just Dwayne. He's an actor. He's a, he's a really good actor. It's basically an action movie where scientists collect samples, suddenly spaceship crash into Earth, and uh, people or creatures who touch the what you call this chemicals whatever it is transform into big giant monsters and whatnot and they go on a rampage in the city so we had a big giant ape a wolf and if i'm not mistaken we had a crocodile and so on yes it's totally different from the movie but the movie played it i won't say straight but it was really entertaining where you have the rock a animal expert with the monk, uh, with the gorillas trying to talk and stuff like, uh, well, I am very bad at explaining stuff. But this movie was a lot of fun when I watched it. Uh, highly entertaining, but don't expect to be similar to the games. This is totally not the game. It's its own story and whatnot. Well, there you go. I personally, I wouldn't mind if they tried adapting uh, King of the Monsters. Oh yeah, that was from the super, from oh. the Super NES. Maybe you see. Can't wait to see that movie. But um, Tara, you you're a big giant monster fan. Uh, would you go watch this movie? I saw. I did see the movie. Oh really? No, sorry, I didn't. I, I thought nobody really. <laughs> yeah. So what, what do you think, man? Like, well, I mean, I'm I'm a sucker for giant monster movies. I really enjoyed it. I mean, at first when I was watching this, because I too played the games in the past, and when I'm watching some of it, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, they, they're not really humans that transformed into these giant monsters, but I'll I'll go with it. I mean, it's you got an albino ape. And they have a strong connection, but then with the medicine, he goes insane, and he goes on a quote-unquote rampage. Uh-huh. But I'm then on the- a rampage. <laughs> but then I like how, the- too, the one guy's like, oh, there's also a giant wolf. The internet calls him Ralph. <laughs> so they call- they they, they mention George and uh, Ralph, but they don't even give the croc- they don't even say the crocodile's name. It's like, come on, really? You couldn't even give the crocodile a name? Even I mean I know what the crocodile's name is, but you couldn't mention that in the movie. Technically, the crocodile was unknown. Really? I don't know. Yeah. I always no, in I mean, the games they called him. No, the no. Crocodile why? Why I mean it's in the movie because. Uh, oh yeah. In the movie, like the crocodile was kind of an unknown factor because you have George, you have uh, Ralph. Those are the two creatures that are kind of in the limelight, but the crocodile, no, nobody knew he was there. True. Well, he wasn't in the NES game. That's part of it. It's like. Silver, interested in watching? Not particularly. I think this one is just... It could be fun, but it doesn't really grab my interest as much. Uh, all right, then. All right, then. Per- per- perhaps that sounds haughty, given my... Uh, I'll watch just about anything. I, too, am a fan of giant monsters. But sometimes you're like... This just feels like it has all the wrong elements. Well, that's like me. I mean, I'm a sucker for giant monster movies, but when Norman mentioned Pacific Rim Uprising, I haven't really seen it, because to me, it looked like a repeat of the first one. Yeah, uh, but uh, Pacific Rim, I don't know, it, it, it was lacking something, and for Rampage, it was just nice. Like, it was, it knew what it was. It was an action movie and stuff, and I, I do like the banter between um, Dwayne and George. They, they were really fun. <laughs> So anyway, um, Silver, what was your movie? What was your movie next? All right. Well, again, you guys, are, we're all talking about movies we liked. And stuff. I saw things I hated. I tried, but I couldn't have. I didn't have the time. <laughs> I saw Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Oh, oh my goodness! Like, oh, wow. why? You know what? I, I kind of understand. Like, I, I mean, how do I put this? I. I won't say that I saw it, but I think the nerd reviewed it. No, not the nerd. The, the, the nostalgia critic. 
he reviewed it. So oh, by yes. proxy, I've seen it a bit. And my sister wanted to watch it, so I think I got it for her. So yeah, man, like I I know a bit of it. So, so carry on. I really oh I could I don't want to <laughs> oh. I don't want to oh man like it has potential. That's why I have to say it had potential. But they screwed it up because the char- the main characters aren't likable. They keep hitting the reset button on the relationship. Oh. The uh, oh god, the the nerd. Okay, the wimpy science kid who steps up at least a little bit he's annoying as can be because they're making him a stereotypical coward the dinosaur veterinarian who has never seen a dinosaur before oh boy and and she's all like i'm a strong independent woman oh hey by the way could you rescue me (laughs) oh wow it is not great then Uh, tara have you watched it i have i actually i saw it while i was in portugal for vacation oh nice that's cool (laughs) so um what do you think? Like, Silver kinds of dislikes it. What about you? I mean, it's kind of the same thing as other movies. They try to run away from dinosaurs. All of a sudden, something serious is about to happen, like some big corporate. Uh, I think they did that in the, um, the second Jurassic Park movie where, you know, these hunters are trying to go out and catch these dinosaurs, but we got to stop them. It's pretty much what they did in here. But I also feel like it wasn't really a movie but it was kind of a setup towards a movie because at the end it's like oh yeah you know all these dinosaurs are out now and we end with blue at the top of a mountain looking down at a neighborhood and I'm like that's it that's oh, where you're ending it and you want to know something more messed up like i think the nostalgia critic put it best because because of this one dumb girl's decision the whole world is going to die yep oh that oh don't even get me started on that i am huffing mad about that uh, yeah, you're open. I had to. They're alive, like me. And but the they're Queen's not English. like you. <laughs> Honestly, I remember uh, when they put together, when they, the Walker brothers were doing just a live reaction, they, like me, were expecting her eyes to sort of become reptilian for just a <laughs> second. Yeah, if they actually did that, then I wouldn't be that much disappointed in them. It's like, your time is over, mankind. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Honest Trailers did it best. They said, uh, well, they said, oh, uh, never mind. I forgot we have guns. <laughs> so, yeah. Never mind Jurassic World. We we have guns. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's it. Like, um, is it okay if we move on, Silva? It's okay if we never have to talk about this again. All right, then. We don't have to. And Tara, what's your... Because we already know there's going to be another Jurassic Park <laughs> or World movie coming up soon, the way they ended it. Uh, no, please, no, no. But anyway, Tara, what's your next movie? My next movie, uh, let's see, how about Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah, I watched that one. Yeah, that's a fun one. It was fun. Oh man, this this was fun. I, I do like the setup for this one where uh, Scott Lang... He he's he's captured. He's 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 been caught by the cops and he's under house arrest. But if you watch the first movie, he he didn't get caught. He was free. Like how did he got caught? It was from the previous movie, from the previous Marvel movie. Uh, what was it again? Captain America. That's where. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that was fun. That was fun there. But the ultimate question, did he ever get an orange slice? <laughs> yeah. I don't think he ever did. <laughs> oh, wow. Dude, this movie was a lot of fun. I, I, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for stealing your thunder. Tara, go, go ahead, man. No, it's okay. <laughs> go ahead. But uh, I, do, I do agree with you, though. This is a good movie. I like how they put more emphasis on, you know, like it's Ant-Man. They have the ability to make things big and small. Like how, oh, they need to move because they're going to be attacked by something. And then they got this huge giant building and if I push up a button, it shrinks down to like a suitcase size. And then they just pack it in the trunk and then, oh no, they're being chased. Quick, let's pull this lever to shrink the van and then make it big. Be like, what? That's so cool. Yeah, the the effects of this movie is a lot of fun. And I, I do like the scene in the school where... um Ant-Man or Scott Lang's suit is kind of um, going haywire and he is like, oh no, I have to, I I can't go big, oh no. And (laughs) they put a kid's jacket on him and he becomes a kid. It's like, oh my god, it's so fun. And then, of course, the great line, do you want uh, some string cheese and a juice box? (laughs) (laughs) Do you you have that? (laughs) 
Um, but also the writing, the comedy for this one, it's it's not like the uh, what you call this um, main line story, and the threat is not the same. But it, it is a lot of fun. I I like this movie. I, I like this movie a lot. As do I. I. I appreciate though that they had at least one more explanation. You know, she, she's the wasp. I'll be like, yo, I don't know if I can open myself to this man again. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not ready. My heart's been trampled. <laughs> I'm just letting you know where he is emotionally. I want physically. <laughs> oh, man. But well, I do have one thing to say, though, mm-hmm. about this movie. At the time I watched the movie, I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp before I watched Infinity War. Oh. So when I saw the end credits, I was a tad bit confused. <laughs> oh, wow. Still, um, it's there, it's there. Um, one thing I like, oh, sorry, one thing I felt a bit disappointed was Michael Pena's um, role in this one. Like, in the previous movie, you got to see him go, like, remember, remember the scene where he was doing the flashback talk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not so much in this one. Ah, them's the breaks. It's not, a, not quite as funny, right? Yeah, like, the previous one was much more entertaining and fun. This one, not so much. Mm-hmm. Ah, well. ah well. I mean, the action was still good, but sometimes the first ones are always better. Oh, uh, we're forgetting to talk about the bad guys here. The bad guys here are not bad. Like, not bad as in good entertaining, or not bad as in they're not really villains. Oh, they're villains, but they're... Uh, that's, that's also questionable because... Oh, wow. Well, um, the villains for this one are a bit different because, okay, you have the main villain... Which is the uh, ghost, was it? I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to take a look, see, because I think... Um, let's just say ghost, because... She, yeah, it is yeah. ghost. So, she has this um, sickness in her where she couldn't stay stabilized. And Morpheus is trying to help her. But um, to do that, they need to kind of use uh, Ant-Man's or the previous Ant-Man's tech to kind of help her and whatnot. But... Uh, it, it's it's kind of a topsy turvy way, and then you have the mafia, who's kind of, you know, it, it is a lot of things. Like the bad guys here are not to the previous Marvel movies bad guys. Honestly, I think Ghost just took the wrong pill. <laughs> uh, but Silver, what do you have to say, man? Well, I I can't say I was really into the villains as much. It was driven mostly by the conflict between Scott and his his friends and trying to work together with them. But I did like them. I, I did like the fact that these villains, they just wanted to save a life, but they went through, went about it through very dubious means. But it's kind of justified when you remember that Hank Pym is not really a morally upstanding guy. He keeps making his own enemies. Yeah, but still, the, the ending was awesome, too. So, yeah. Well, where he goes giant again. Really, how big did you go? Oh, you know, several stories. <laughs> and they're literally comparing sizes. <laughs> Actually... While we're on the topic of comedy, the one part that literally made me die of laughter is when Hope and uh, I forget the father's name, but when the mother takes control of Scott oh, and then the mother's talking through Scott, <laughs> and then usually Scott is like, "I love you, pumpkin." I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was good too. That was good too. Oh boy, kind of. You're like, wow, this makes the relationship really weird. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boys, but anywho, um, as for me on my next movie, uh, let's see, there's a few more actually. Wow, well, we let's speed things up. Let's speed things up. And yeah, we gotta speed yeah. things up here. For me, Deadpool two, yay, much awesomeness, very yay, yay. Did you watch this, Tara? Of course, I had the chimichangas and everything. <laughs> nice. So, um, Deadpool two is this equal to Deadpool one, obviously, and in this one, it's totally different. Like. Deadpool here is, in the first few minutes, he's trying to off himself. Why? Because, well, um, he goofed up. He got his uh, girlfriend slash wife. Is it wife or girlfriend? Girlfriend. Yeah. Girlfriend. It was girlfriend, but soon to be wife. Got her killed, and it's his fault, and he's feeling rather depressed. And that depression carries all the way to the middle, where um, Colossus tries to help him, but it kind of yes and no stuff. But uh, how do I put this? Movie is a lot of fun. Go watch. And also, Cable is here. He wants to kill a kid because the kid is the bad guy that kills his, what you call this, kids and stuff. Like, oh, wow. A lot of things happen. 
and I have to say that this movie is a lot of fun. Uh, it, it is a lot of fun. I, I do like the whole. I, I sorry, I do like the whole story where Deadpool has to be a mentor, but he's not good at it. Well, I agree. He's he's Deadpool. You don't look for him for wholesome uh, guidance, but you do get to see an awesome fight scene and humor, and even. Okay, sometimes they go with the jokes from the first movie and try to amp it up, like the tiny leg scene. <laughs> I mean, that was the best part, in my opinion. Just, oh my god! Like, especially when he comes up and gives Cable a hug. He's like, "Come here!" You see him like waddling like a little baby. He's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> or and meanwhile, and when you when you get the up shirt shots, oh god. it's like, well, suddenly I'm flashing back to Thor Ragnarok. Yep, that's in my brain now. Oh. <laughs> Or um, remember where Deadpool was just hanging out in the mansion and he was walking around. Suddenly, they, they were the, the X Men were doing something or doing a conversation or talking something. Then suddenly, the beast closes the door. <laughs> so it's Deadpool's just a lot of fun and yeah. a good laugh all around. Yeah. I loved it. And I'm just gonna go to spoiler territories because it's worth to talk about it. In the end, where he still cables time traveling thing, and you know what? Okay, I'm gonna save my girlfriend. Yep, did that. Okay, what what else can I do? What else can I do? Oh, um, I'm gonna save um, who who's that guy? His um, friend person. Oh, I forget his name. With no power. Are we talking about the guy with Are we talking no powers? The cab driver? No, no, not him. Not him. Um, the big guy. What was his name? Juggernaut. No, no powers. No. Oh, the guy who's just on LinkedIn and he gets <laughs> interrogated, quote marks, by Cable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, for, I forget his name off the top of my head. but Oh, yeah. uh, oh God. And the X-Force landing scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. oh, my God. Him. Like, he, 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 gets, he gets killed somehow. And suddenly, like, oh, no, no, no. no. Um, Deadpool saves him. <laughs> and, oh, wow. The, the most interesting scene was... When we get to see X Men, um, Wolverine Origins, and yeah, he's there. Deadpool's there. Suddenly, yeah, Deadpool comes and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was fun. Green Lantern. <laughs> did he stop that? What did he do? I forgot. He shot Ryan Reynolds in the head. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh my god! And also, oh, the, 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 that awesome cameo! That awesome cameo! I'm not gonna say who it is because I want you guys to go watch it because that cameo was awesome. Well, I've seen the movie. Yeah, yeah. You remember the cameo? Honestly, uh, kind I'm, of. I'm blanking for a minute. That one, yeah, that one frame I don't cameo. Exactly one frame cameo. Uh I will. You'll have to tell me after we're finished recording. So no spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The electric cable. Uh, th- 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 nah, I'm I'm drawing okay. a blank. No, later. Okay, okay, okay. But I think we should move on to the next movie. Yep. Okay. So, Silver, what when, when they movie movie next? Bad times. The El Royale. Mm. Sounds interesting. What an interesting. Did you see it? Uh, no, I haven't. Torterra. Seen it? No, I have not. I've never even heard of that. Was it Bad Times Battle Royale or something bad, like that? <laughs> bad times at the El Royale. Oh, El Royale. It's Spanish. I've never for- heard of it. It's Spanish for the Royale. Huh. Well, I've never watched it. Well, it's a good one. You have all these different characters checking into different rooms, and no one is as they seem. And it it gets dark and heavy, but there are some characters you really root for, uh, especially the bellhop, whom, wow, you just feel bad for this kid, <laughs> as he starts off as just seemingly this very unreliable goofball, and by the end, you're like, ah! <laughs> so, what kind of movie is this, Silver? Like, I'm noticing they say uh, an FBI agent and stuff. Like, huh? Or it's well, the FBI agent. He's. It's funny. He's not in it for long, but he's probably the most linchpin character, for he sets everything in motion. Oh, okay. But I would put this in firmly in the drama. And when Chris Hemsworth character comes into play, oh, things take off. He he kind of steals the show. I thought it was a marvelously good movie with uh, a lot of likability, excessive violence. Oh. I mean, you feel it when people take a hit. Ooh, okay. 
And this is like, a, ah. this is also a musical, right? Nope, no music. Well, th- one of the one of the characters is a singer, uh. so she'll do a little bit of singing, but it's not really a musical. Oh, okay. So I'm just looking at the wiki page and it says music, and I'm guessing it's music for the movie itself. All right. So we recommend watching. Yes, very much. Hmm, all right. If it's on, I'll check it out. And Tara, what about you? Well, I guess the one movie I saw in 2018, I mean, I don't fully remember it 100% because I only saw it one time, but I saw Isle of Dogs. Oh, that one. I oh. Oh, I, I want to watch that one. I had it on standby just to watch it. But how is it? It's pretty good. I mean, I, I always love the stop motion and creativity, like how these all these figures like of the dogs and the humans, they're all like, you know, dolls or action figures, as guys would say it. Mm-hmm. And frame by frame, they just move each and every piece. And then when you put it all together in a movie, it just looks so good. Yeah. All right. All right. The setting is in China, something like that? Yes. And so pretty much the story is that the setting is in China. And then apparently some dog disease or whatever spreads around all these dogs and everyone doesn't want to get sick. So they pretty much send all these dogs to a place called Trash Island where they pretty much dump all their garbage. Oh, all right. That's not good. No. And, but then uh, the the mayor's son, he's like, well, I mean, I don't know if he says it or not. Like I said, I don't remember. But the mayor's son wants to get his dog back. So he flies over there to find his dog. And then from there, the dogs on the island, like a few, a few sort of dogs, not all the dogs, obviously, but a few dogs, they find him and like, we should help this kid find his dog. I mean, obviously this kid wants the dogs to come back home. So they help him out to find his dog. Mm, Awesome. So long story short, um, recommend watching. I know some people have mixed opinions on these things, but I think it's one that should watch. I mean, I can't really force you to watch it, but I'd recommend it. But if you don't like it, hey, that's my opinion. Everyone has different opinions. True, true, true. And by the way, Silver, have you watched this? Oh, yes, and I loved it. Oh, what do you think? Oh, I, just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I'm a dog person, so I'm all for the puppies. All right. Well, it even has it in the, na- in the name, I Love Dogs. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying, I love dogs. Oh. Exactly. Right, but I, I always appreciate the the different style and the characterization and some of the humor, like when the dogs are uh, are weighing the option of fighting over the contents of a garbage bag and yeah. the <laughs> stuff is like, dude, dude, it's worth it. So you just cut right back to a big, <laughs> big dust pile fighting dogs. And so I love the whole thing. All right. I found it fantastic. So recommend it then. Oh, very much. All right. Yes, very much recommended. So, on to me next. Uh, Incredibles 2. So, yeah, it, it's pretty mainstream. Like, my movie, is sec- my movie selection is safe. <laughs> well, that's okay. So, yeah, that's um, fine. you guys watch this? Yes. Uh, yes. So, you want to know what? I- I'm just going to make this quick. Incredibles 2 is the direct sequel to the first one. And it's kind of okay. I, I-, I like the story because... Uh, Invisigirl or yeah, Invisigirl gets most of the limelight here, and it's a really awesome movie. Go go check it out. Like, um, there's nothing more to say. Like, it is fun. Uh, bad guys, rather creative. I do like the bad guys here. Um, a lot of good, awesome fight scenes and whatnot. Like, I highly recommend go watching this. And what do you guys have to say? Uh, well, it's it's Elastigirl, not Invisigirl. Oh. Sh- you know, I don't care. Helen's awesome. <laughs> Unless he could have been talking about Violet. Oh, Helen's good too. <laughs> uh, what's the... uh, it, it's. I think it's a lot of fun. It's some of the B plot struggle, like like uh, the girl, the daughter, and the boyfriend thing. It's just sort of going nowhere mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the most part. And mm-hmm. a lot of people have debated the villain's motive and perspective feeling that it's one of the weaker aspects and they make some good critiques uh screen slaver could have been more a commentary on how television is intruding into our lives and the heroes are just sort of a byproduct or they're they're caught up in the conflict but it's not really the focus so it legitimate critiques but it doesn't diminish the fact that i had fun watching this movie and would readily recommend it Mm-hmm. All, right, all right, and I'm assuming that goes for the same for you, uh, Tara. 
Kind of. I mean, I did like the movie. I really enjoyed it. I liked the action, like the especially with Elastigirl, like how she's on that motorcycle, and then when she stretches out, so does the bike. I love that. I guess the one nitpicky I have is that the the year it takes place. I mean, yeah, sure, The Incredibles first. I don't exactly remember the release date of it, but it took years and years to finally get a sequel. And I was kind of thinking, hmm, okay, we've been waiting this long. Maybe after the Underminer incident, we'll see like a few years later, we'll see Violet and Dash grown up and Jack-Jack a bit grown up, but he's still trying to get used to his powers since, you know, he's still at a young age. But no, they haven't really aged. They're still pretty much the same age. Like nothing happened. It's like, come on, they could have got more story out of the kids. Like the kids are still learning their powers. Even Jack-Jack. Jack-Jack could have had the spotlight, but no, he's still a baby. In this true, one. true. Like, I, I know what you mean. Like, it would be fun to see, like, um, what the 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 time difference. What five years, six years, or well, ten years, probably something like that. It would be fun to see that time skip. But nah, they didn't. But anywho, um, Silver, what's your movie? I'm gonna break away from the action and drama. I'm gonna just go with "Won't You Be My Neighbor." Won't you be my neighbor? No, I haven't seen that one. Which uh, I don't know. Should I be your neighbor? Do you do you play loud music? Maybe. Well, then no. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. This was th- all right. Now, okay. Oh, I wish I seen this. Yes, Fred Rogers, uh, Mister Rogers of Mister Rogers' Neighborhood. Now, I saw this at the Alamo Draft House, and when I got there, there were packets of tissues at every seat. <laughs> and I, really? And I was like, "Are are we going to need these?" And the the guy the the guys running the the theater said, "Maybe." And by the end of the movie, it's like, you know, I need the tissues. There's something over this. This is so beautiful. It's such a kind man. It's, it's like. Is that touching, huh? Okay. It, sorry, sorry. Tara, do, do, do you know who Mr. Roger is? Not really. Man. Oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 Silver, no, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. I do know who Mr. Rogers is. I, I can't. I can't even I anymore. Ha- no, I do know. I had a brain fart for a bit, but now I remember. I do. I can't even with you, Torterra. <laughs> I remember. Don't don't question me. I I just had a little brain fart. <laughs> I'm not questioning you. I'm burying you. <laughs> Ask Safi that question then, huh? Ask if she knows who Mr. Rogers is. I'm not sure she remembers anything past the last 10 minutes at this point. <laughs> no, probably not. Okay, um, so is this a documentary, by the way? It is. Oh, okay. Uh uh, it features accounts from his friends, his, his co-stars, his wife, his children. Uh, they're very respectful. It's like I'm sure there's a lot that happened behind the scenes when when you suddenly look like America's dad for a time. You're probably – that probably creates some strain at home with your actual children. But it was very respectful, uh, very touching. It speaks to an era that I think is gone. Fred Rogers would never make it on YouTube. He's too nice. And that's a sad realization. Yeah. And one of the few... Okay, personally for me, I've never seen him on TV. Why would I, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, this was... Um, air, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was aired in, uh, what, CBS or one of those government-sanctioned channels, right? Yeah, PBS. There's this great scene where he convinces a senator basically single-handedly to keep funding public broadcasting yeah and that's why i was going like i seen that um clip of him talking to the senator and i wish i got to see him on tv like wow how do i put it like he is one of those guys that you would (laughs) how do i put it um if he were to be at any con people would just like be awing at him because like he's like your dad and something like that like he'll be so nice like oh my god he, you can find no fault in him i'll be honest given all the the accusations that have come out against people especially like bill cosby mm-hmm. i was really afraid that as this movie came out someone would step forward and say well mr rogers did this and it wouldn't be afraid because you know oh don't break the illusion it's that no one's as good as you you, you hope they are. Mm-hmm. In fact, d- during the documentary, they play a, an interview clip where a guy flat out says to to Fred Rogers, "Are you for real? <laughs> Is this image we see on on TV f- you?" And it was. It's it's this rare gift of it seems of a, a genuinely nice, kind guy on TV 
was a genuinely nice, kind guy in real life. And that's liquid gold. Yeah, you don't get that anymore. Like, oh man, this is just awesome. I, I will try and f- watch this if I can. Like, he's the brothers, yeah. And like, e- even I haven't seen him and I like him. He's awesome. He's like the grandpa and uncle I want. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, carrying on. Tara, what, what's your next? Mm, I can't really think of any other 2018 movies I watched this year. So, I, I'm guessing you're done then? Yeah, I think I've reached the end of my oh, line. Okay, then. So, next for me, uh, Mission Impossible, Fallout. I saw that. Oh. Not me. <laughs> Sorry. Not a bad movie. I, I, I like this one. Um, Action is, well, it's an action movie. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Silva, you said you watched it, right? So, what do you think? It was a fun movie, a lot of action, a lot of tension. At, at some points, I'm like, okay, at this point, you're you're basically might just have Ethan Hawke tie uh, one arm behind his back just to add even more of a challenge to this. <laughs> true, true. It's a lot of fun, especially when you knew that um, Tom Cruise injured himself in the production of this movie. Well, I I got the sense he's doing his own hero worship. I mean, at this point, Ethan Hunt isn't even human. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the code word scene. I am the storm. <laughs> uh, at, at which point I flashed the Ducktales. Have you always been talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boys. Well, anywho, um, Silva, would you recommend people go watch this? Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's not something that really sticks with you, but it's fun enough. Mm. And as for me, I say if it's on, go watch it. Um, don't hunt it down. Like, it's it's one of those action flick movies where it's fun. It's fun. Like, go watch it if you have the time kind of thing. Yeah. And Silver, what's next on your list? Into the Spider-Verse. Ooh. Ah, yes. Uh, Tara, you watch this? You know what? I was actually planning on seeing the movie, but I never got the chance oh. to. Well, it's worth catching on video at the very least. Yes. Watch it. Uh, yeah, you can always catch it on the web, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, we don't endorse piracy. Uh, but it's wink, spiders. Wink. Get it? <laughs> I, just, I just did it for the pun. <laughs> ah, well, there you go. All right. So, Silver, what do you have to say? Well, uh, I just love it. Uh, it takes a minute to get into it just because you're – you start with Spider Man, and then it's a it's a difficult uh, ordeal for our new hero Miles Morales. But then all of a sudden, once the once the energy starts going, it's bam, bam, bam. Spider Man left and right, Spider Woman, Spider Gwen, and it just becomes a lot of fun, humor, great visuals. I can understand why Sony would patent the technology behind the animation style. Yeah, the, the animation style is different. Like it, it's. It's really awesome. Like I think what they're using a one forty animation tactic, like the animation. Is, it is it is a lot of fun. And also, um, I have to say that the villain, the kingpin for this one, Wilson Fisk, he's awesome. He's not bad, and he's being played by the Storm King. Although his size made him look kind of weird. Yeah, I think they're banking on the comic book version of him. But anyway, it was it was a f- wonderful movie, maybe the best Spider-Man movie we've had. Ah, uh, oh, man, that, that's debatable. Like, oh my god, <laughs> uh, but still, it, it was a fun movie, especially Spider Noir. <laughs> <laughs> I will discover the meaning behind this cube. Oh man, also Nicolas Cage, yo. <laughs> uh, I, I would have not expected him. Well, we like to, they like to keep you guessing. I know, I know, and. Talking about spiders, right? Uh, my next movie is Venom. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. Oh, oh really? No. There's another movie I also planned on seeing. So, um, Venom here is interesting. Like, it's not part of the Spider-Man universe, so it takes a lot of liberty in its story. But it's a lot of fun. It is a fun movie where uh, Venom here is just trying to survive at first. And the, uh, who now, uh, Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock here is a straight lace. I won't say, you know, he's edgy. He's edgelord, um, journalist who seeks the truth and whatnot until one day he screws his opportunity and gets fired from his job and whatnot. And yeah, let's just say that he screwed up. 
And it is a fun movie. Like, I would say if you have the time, go watch it. it it's fun. And also, um, at the end of the movie, Spider Verse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there you go. Then I'll have to, I'll have to catch it just to see if I can get in on this. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So much fun, so much fun. So, um, Silver, what's next? Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. Oh, another movie I was going to plan on seeing, but I never did get the chance to see it. It's the, the, it's the anthem of victory. <laughs> oh, how is it? Here's the. Well, it's wonderfully acted. It loved how people portrayed everyone, including the actor for Freddie Mercury. He looks similar. But and oh the 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 ending concert is fantastic. Uh, watching everyone just sort of come together. The biggest flaw for me is that this is almost a cookie cutter story of a rise to fame, a loss of self, a rediscovery, and a rally. There's not. It's almost paint by numbers, and you feel I feel like that's doing much of Queen a disservice as the focus is on Freddie Mercury. Whereas it's supposed, to, whereas they, uh, it, it it's supposed to be about the band. I think I th- I think the other band members were sidelined, but then my, I guess that's true of real life. Where Freddie Mercury was the standout, all eyes on me kind of guy, or at least the most uh, outgoing. I get the feeling with uh, what, your, your statement there with eyes on me kind of thing in his songs. Like I've got the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. And when I listen to it, I get this uh, feeling or this tone where it starts off with the whole band singing. And as time goes on, it's more about Freddy rather than the band. Yep. So it's a good movie. I don't know if if it's truly historically accurate or probably dramatized in many many regard or altered. But, but either way, I... I Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I would recommend it. All right, all right. And for me, next would be Rolf Breaks the Internet, Rick It Rolf 2. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Tara, you watch it? Another movie I was going to plan on seeing. Oh, well, uh, here's our recommendation. So, um, Phil, what you were saying? Just that I had a lot of fun watching it. I love how they, they make the internet this, this beautiful, uh, energetic place. It looks like a lot of fun, and then... I'm glad they steer clear of the message boards because it would have looked terrible. I think there is that moment where Ralph reads all the comments and you're like, yeah, that's people on the internet. Never read the comments. Yeah, kind of true, but still. But no, uh, this movie was not bad. I, I do like it, but uh, one of I, I wonder, if it was was it you in your civil quilt that say that, am I having sympathy for pop-up ads? Oh, yes, my without context. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm feeling bad for a pop up. I should not feel bad for a pop up. <laughs> things are so annoying. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! The the way they portray stuff in here, like uh, okay, if you have an ad blocker, uh, they portray your avatar with a bouncer. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool! And uh, Stanley's cameo was awesome here too. I I forgot to say, Into the Spider Verse probably had the best Stan Lee cameo. <laughs> uh, but uh, in the end, like Wreck It Ralph two is a movie without a villain. Yep. The hero is his own antagonist. Mm-hmm. And I, I think who mentioned to me, somebody mentioned to me about Wreck-It Rolf, where, um, remember in the first movie where they say, don't go turbo? It feels like Vanellope is doing that. Yeah. Was it you or somebody else? I don't remember. But see, that's the thing. Like They're breaking their own rules. Well, I, they're, they're saying... A lot of people have argued this, but I, I'd say going turbo means inserting yourself into another game. Which is what Vanellope and that's did. What she, it's just that this time they, they've added her code. They've apparently done it in such a way that it's safe. Mm. She's, she'll be okay. And that's all. That, so I guess it's not the worst thing, but I'm like, hang on, you're, you're changing the rules on me. Yeah, but still, it's one of those things where... Um, Turbo was a very old classic video game where you could not do that while this is a MMO kind of deal. Well, we should also mention that at the end of Wreck-It Ralph 1, Hubert and Crunk Company, they got uh, to be in a bonus level. Ooh, yay. So maybe you can be Turbo in a good way. Mm-hmm. And also Sonic was awesome. Sonic, strangely eloquent. I know. 
Uh, I think he's been around the internet for a while now. <laughs> uh, I hope the Sonic movie that's going to come out is good. <laughs> oh, I have mixed opinions on that. Uh, wait, wait and see. Wait and see. Anyway, Silver, what's your Norman, I wreck Ralph was on my list too. Uh, Christopher Robin. Wow, how was that? I well, uh, I saw it with a bunch of other uh, YouTubers. Uh, Josh and Ari and M- Lightning Bliss and Dr. Wolf. And, Did you saw this at were, the con? Yeah, this was at uh, Crystal Mountain PonyCon, oh. the last one. Oh, all right. And uh, they all were fawning over it. I mean, they really adored it. Oh, wow. It, it was just a really great movie for them. I was maybe a little less smitten because I recognized the trope of the workaholic who's lost touch with his inner child and isn't connecting with his family and has... And so here comes this mystical help in the form of Winnie the Pooh uh, trying to get ever trying to reconnect with the Christopher Robin he knew. And it's a great uh, it is a great movie. I think it's very well done. It's just that I didn't bond with it as strongly as others. Just because you saw the trope coming from a 10 mile away then. Uh, yeah, I saw the tropes, and maybe I'm just a gra- grouchy old codger. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but would you still recommend watching this? Yes. All right, then. All right, then. And well, uh, Silver, you were calling my name out. Anything? Oh no, I I forgotten that you had recommended Rocket Ralph, so I thought it was your turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. Like, yeah, Ralph is awesome. Go watch it if you can. Also, go watch the first one. Like, there's the. Uh, I forgot to mention that they mentioned a time gap, and it's literally the year that. Uh, the movie was being made like what five years was it they say so yeah <laughs> it's kind of cool um, for me next movie for my list is Aquaman kind of fun that's funny that was my last movie too <laughs> yeah. well technically I have two more to go so uh, I'm gonna make this quick Aquaman highly entertaining um, I do love Jason Momoa in here he is just awesome like go watch it like people will say Aquaman's dumb and whatnot. Just go watch this movie and you'll see why he's awesome. And I, I agree. I, I enjoyed it. This is also a movie where you see a lot of tropes coming a mile away. I mean, Chekhov's gun is in full effect. Oh, yeah. Here. But it's not that bad. But No, no, it's not bad. It's because in some ways it's like because you understand the tropes and it's not trying to be more than that. Mm-hmm. Instead, it just does those tropes really well. The scene where he descends to get this mystical trident and the conflict that takes place there, Carl Jung would have a field day with this. Oh, yeah. He, oh, it, the imagery and the concept and the integration of the shadow uh, is fantastic. And by the end, you have, you know, here's Iron Man. We have a Hulk, <laughs> Aquaman. That's cute. I have an eldritch horror. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, but what, what, one thing that surprised me, right, about this movie, probably I shouldn't be if I knew Aquaman, but no, it's that Aquaman's or Arthur's mentor is played by, uh, who is his name again? Oh, I'm blanking. Shoot. Person who played Green Goblin. Eh. Uh, I, I'm drawing a blank with that. Uh, well, let, but I know who you're talking about. I'm afraid we need to keep going because I've got like five minutes. Oh, sorry left. about that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Go, go watch. Yeah, go watch. Go watch. <laughs> Silver, what's your next list? Oh, I'm out. Oh. I'm tapped. All right. Okay. So, um, for me, I have two more to go. I'll make this a set because <laughs> Silver is five minutes ago. I'm sorry about that. So, um, on my list is Dragon Ball Super Brawly, and this is fun. Wait, that's a 2018. For me, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It, for you, it came out in 2018. And I watched oh. it in Japanese. So, yes. So, anyway, um, I'm going to be a side with this one. This movie was a lot of fun. Uh, the whole story about the Broly saga, I like this one better. Like, the previous Broly saga was cool and whatnot. But in this one, I understand a bit more why Broly got dumped into the capsule. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, yeah, let's just say that all the fan art, if you watch online about Broly having a girlfriend, yeah, much fun, much fun. So, um, Silver, you want to cheat a bit and share Limelight with me? I did see it and thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, there's a little bit of the epic of Gilgamesh in oh, this. what's that? Honestly, I think we could devote an entire podcast to just that. So I'm going to leave that as a teaser. All right, then, all right, then. You could talk a little bit about a classic tale using Goku and Broly as updated versions 
Just as I've often viewed Goku as the anime Hercules. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just think that Goku is just the idiot. <laughs> so is Hercules. Oh my god, really now? All right. Uh, so, love the characters, love the dynamic. Freeze is hilarious. They have the fastest hour in Dragon Ball history. Ooh. It's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to devote like 10 episodes to that <laughs> three minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then suddenly two, an hour goes by. Boom. Done. So, lot, lots and lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, and I would highly recommend if, uh, like Silver said, it's out. Go watch it. Like you won't be sorry if you're a Dragon Ball fan. You'll be you'll be happy. And last on my list, um, quote unquote, watch it today. But movie came out last year was the Teen Titans go to the movies. Uh, watch this because out of curiosity, I wanted to know why was this movie even made, and from what I can tell that. Robin is a Robin has a big ego and he wants his own movie. And in the end he learns the power of friendship. Songs were humorous and fun. And would I say go watch this movie? I don't know. Um maybe <laughs> it's fun. Dumb kind of fun. So if you're morbidly curious, go check it out. And if you want to check Stan Lee out. Yeah, uh, this is the movie. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's about it. So um, that's our movie of 2018. So what will be next year's thing or 2019's list? Well, I have. Uh, well, you guys have to wait for well one year to kind of check it out or wait for our thoughts. Okay, so anywho, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I believe it's time to get back to the ponies. Because we've got, oh, wow, we're going to have a time talking about Yakety Sax and Pinkie Pinkie Pie's assault on our eardrums. Didn't that episode got leaked early, if I remember right? It did get leaked early. Or it was part of an early airing for To Celebrate Summer. I don't Uh, understand the order. But it's time time for us to talk about it. So, yeah, next, uh, next episode would be... Yeah, Kitty sucks, so don't come back. No, do come back. We, we want <laughs> you. But that, that episode can go away. <laughs> so, anywho, if you, um, so any, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imagery.gmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the show. For me, it's at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter. Just do a search for Silver Quill. Uh, also on DeviantArt, MLP, Silver Quill. And of course, the YouTubes. Uh, after the fact or Silver Quill. I also be on Equestria Daily every Wednesday with a comic review or editorial. Nice, nice. And do check those out. Those are fun to read and watch. And also, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, and Twitter under the name Torterra1324. All righty then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLiveLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. You know what we do, but it's in digital mobile form. You can listen it to your iPods and stuff, whatever it is. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's already access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I like to thank King Me, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Dr. Cat, Jeffrey, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. I am Tartara1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mia Show. See ya. Happy movie watching. Catch you later. <laughs> now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go get some popcorn. <laughs> and as a wrap, I want to pop it for you.